Hello and welcome, this is Lino Tadros and in this video we will continue our experimentation with Flowwise and this time I would like to show you how to use document stores that are global to the entire installation of Flowwise instead of embedding and doing the vectorization and the loading of the documents and the chunking all on the same chat flow itself. So let's go ahead and get started. As you can see from previous, I had a chat flow here called YouTube Tutorial. What I ended up creating my open AI by passing it my credentials and I'm using GPT-40 for instance. And then I have my conversational retriever QA. All of these things are available like before buffer memory. But the extra piece for RAG is that I ended up creating four different activities. One for loading the specific file, whether it's a PDF, CSV, Excel, and so on and so forth. And then another one for activity to do the chunking. And then another, a third one for the embedding. And uh, finally, I use my vectorization database to, to take care of that vector as well. So I actually ended up doing these four different things inside of the same chat flow every single time. So is there a better way to do it without having to clutter my chat flow with all of the, these four different steps to be able to vectorize some documents on your machine? And there, there is definitely a great way of doing this in Flowwise. So let's go ahead and, and take a look on how we can do that. First thing we're going to do, we're going to go backwards a little bit globally to all your Flowwise AI installation on this machine. I'm running it locally. And notice at the bottom in here, there's something called document store. Let's click on this guy. And right now it's completely empty. So I'm going to create a brand new document store. We'll say add a new. And I'm going to give it a name. We'll call it, for instance, uh, Lino Documents. There you go. That's good enough for me. I can hopefully give it a good description so other members of my team know why I created this document store. And we'll say add. And now there is no flow, no characters being chunked or anything like that. So I'm going to click on that Lino Documents. And now I can start loading all my documents that I would like to embed and vectorize globally to my Flowwise AI. So I'm going to say add a document loader. Notice there are a lot of different providers in Flowwise. Very, very comprehensive. Whether you want to use CSV files or you would like to scrape or scroll a specific website or Airtable. Uh, there are Confluence, you can actually get to GitHub repository that make it available, a JSON file, PDFs, you name it, it's available in here as well. I'm going to use a PDF file for this example in here, but you can use any of them if you'd like. And now, uh, notice I can actually upload a file. Let's go ahead and uh, choose something from my machine in here. I think I have one for the State, state of the Union address, so to... 2023, there it is. There's President Biden's last year uh, State of the Union address. It's about 84 pages in a PDF downloadable from whitehouse.gov. And also, you can actually see the usage is that I would like to use one document per page or one document per file. And I don't want to do that. I actually want to use the chunking. But instead of having a different activity like we did in the previous videos, notice if I go all the way to the bottom, the text splitter is available. And these are all the current text splitters available in Flowwise as well. You can use the character text splitter. You can use the recursive text splitter, token text splitter. You can choose whichever you want. I'm going to use the recursive one in here. And I get to say the chunk size will be, let's say, 500. And I'd like to overlap those 50 like we've done in previous videos. I'm not going to repeat that. If you don't know what that is, please Please go and watch the previous videos on the channel as well. All right, that's the only thing I need to do in here. I can actually even preview the chunks right here. So it'll say pre preview the chunks and it will only preview 20. There is a lot more than 20, but just 20 of them uh, we will be able to preview. Notice there is 137 uh, different chunks that got created. All right, I'm happy with what I'm seeing. Let's go ahead and process this. So once it's processed, notice it's in the green. I got my PDF. Now I can upload other files. So you can say add document loader, maybe add a Word document, an Excel spreadsheet, or 10 other PDFs. It's definitely up to you. We know right now that we have 137 different chunks that were created. But of course, I didn't do the embedding or the vectorization yet. This is just the first two steps. There are four of them. I did the ingestion of the PDF and I did the chunking. Now let's go ahead and say, what happens if I go to the absurd config in here? And now there are three different things I can do. The first one is to embedding, okay? That means take every single chunk and create these 1,536 different axes uh, to be able to, to place every single chunk's attributes as floats, as numbers inside of that sphere of 1,536 ones. So I'm going to say select the embedding. Again, you have a lot of choices. You can use the Azure OpenAI embeddings, go here. You can use Mistral. You can use Hugging Face. You can do whatever you want. And in my case in here, I'm already going to be using OpenAI. So let's go ahead and use OpenAI embedding in here as well. 
I can use the same exact credentials I'm going to end up using with chat flows. And now I have three choices. I can use the ADA002, I can use the three small or the three large. The first two here at the bottom, these are all based on 1536 different um, axes. The three large is the newer one, it's 3000, so it's even more um, comprehensive as well. So you are more than welcome to use whichever. I'm going to use the one in the middle. Let's use still 1536 ones in here. I don't need to add any of these things. These are advanced. I'll be more than happy to talk about them in future videos as well. But now that I've, I've actually pointed to my embedding, the only thing is to uh, save whatever comes out of these embeddings for the entire documents and all the 137 different chunks. I'd like to put them in a vector store. All right, let's go ahead and click on that. And these are all the possibilities. Some of you might actually want to use the Chroma DB on your machine. Some might use in-memory vector store. Some will use Fies, which is a great way of also testing this locally on your machine, Elastic uh, Search. PostgreSQL, Pinecone is very famous. Uh, you can use that. Just go create an account for free and get your API key and you'll be able to use Pinecone automatically. There are a lot of them. Single store, a lot of people use that with SQL usually to, to try it out. And Redis is great. So you try it out and see which one you feel more comfortable with. In my case in here, let's use something different than this in-memory vector store that I always use. Let's use Fice, for instance. I'm going to click on that. And now I just need to tell it where would you like to leave the index when this gets created? So I'm going to go to my uh, drive. I'm going to say e colon backslash. We'll say files backslash test. All right. This doesn't exist, but let's just putting a path in here. It will end up putting the files that index file that contains all the vectorization that came out of the embedding as well. All righty. The record manager, I'm not going to mention it in here in this video, but this is a very, very powerful piece as well. We will do a whole video on it by itself. This is when you are actually bringing in like a hundred files and you vectorized all of them. And then a week from now, two of the files have changed. Well, I don't want to go back and delete everything and recreate. I mean, this stuff costs money. This embedding will end up costing money. So the record manager will remember what was indexed on each and every single chunk and it will only remove uh, and bring in the pieces that have changed only. This is very, very powerful, especially when you delete information or you append new information uh, in the system as well, or update existing ones as well that fall into one of the 137 chunks that we're working with. Very, very powerful. But for right now, let's keep it simple just to show you how the document stores work. All right, so I'm in pretty good shape. I'm going to save the configuration for that. And I'm going to go ahead and do the absurd. That means go ahead and take the 137 different chunks, embed them and leave them into FICE database right there. We'll say absurd. And it will take a few seconds to do the job. It, it actually did cost me money right now. It did go to OpenAI using my key. And now we have 137 different uh, chunks that have been embedded and vectorized. I can even test the retrieval right here before I even go into a chat flow at all. So we'll say test the retrieval. It knows where the pass to the index is. The, I, I place it in my FICE test folder. And now I can actually ask a question. It's like, what did the president say about medication, for instance? Let's uh, go ahead and see if it will figure it out. So if I click on that, remember, this is not trying to get an answer from the LLM. This is just trying to do a retrieval from the FICE database. And notice there are four, four different chunks. OK, so number 115, 39, 47 and 46. These are the four chunks out of 84 pages. So out of 137 different chunks, the system was able to get into the FICE uh, vector database and found out four different chunks out of the 137 has anything to do with medication. And the beautiful thing about this, believe it or not, the president did never mention the word medication in his speech, by the way. So if you read the whole 84 pages, there is no med mention of medication at all. So if I went directly against the, the, the document and just embedded in my prompt, these questions will not be answered. Because we use FICE and we use the vector database, the similarity of the word medication versus the word uh, prescription drugs versus COVID versus whatever he talked about that is very close to the word medication, that's why it found these four chunks. Even read these four chunks, you will find out there is no mention of medication at all. But the system is smart enough to do the similarities and the semantic search that happened on that as well. All right, so obviously this is going well. Let's save that. Now I got myself a document store. It's called the Lino Documents and it has been absurded already. We're ready to go. All right, let's go to chat flows and let's create a brand new chat flow. And I'm going to do like I did in previous videos. I'll do the three things that we always do. We'll do uh, like the chat model. I'm going to bring in uh, OpenAI again. 
uh, right, because I already have an API key for that guy. Where is my opening that it is? We'll bring this guy in here. I'm gonna use my YouTube API keys. There you go. And for this one, let's go ahead and use the 4.0 latest. There you go. And we can make the temperature 0.2. I'm gonna even allow you to upload images if you want, that's fine. And then we will bring in a chain. So let's go to chains and find out the, con the conversational retrieval QA chain. All the stuff we've done in previous videos as well. I'm going to bring in the, the LLM model, bring it into the chat model. I notice I don't even need the memory or the input moderation. I'll, here it's telling you if, it, if it's left empty, a default buffer memory will be used, which it has to do something. So in memory, uh, buffer memory will work because this is going to be a conversation. The only thing left for me is this vector store retrieval. And that's the important piece. Now I don't have to bring in four more activities. One for the chunking, one for the ingestion, one for the embedding. No, I don't need to do that. I can just open this up. And let's go ahead and find out the one for the vector store. There it is all the way at the bottom, vector stores. And I'm trying to find one called document store. And this is the new thing in FlowWise that you can use. If I bring this guy in here, okay, it has access, of course, globally to your installation of FlowWise. So it hopefully will see the Lino documents that I worked on. So we'll click on that. And then I'm going to bring in the retriever and I'm going to be pointing to the vector store retriever. Believe it or not, this is the only thing you have to do from now on. That means in other chat flows, I can just bring in the vector store right away. I don't have to do all the absurding. Notice even if I save this, I'm going to give it a name. We'll say my rag demo, for instance. Okay, we'll say save. Notice it doesn't bring in the green button anymore because there is nothing to absurd. All the embedding and all the vectorization has already been taken care of outside of this chat flow, which is really clean, very nice, and can be reusable in other chat flows with no problem. Excellent. Now let's go ahead and ask a question. We'll click on that. Let's make it a little bit bigger. And in here we'll say, what did the president say about medication? And let's go ahead and run this guy up. And this time it's not only going to retrieve the, the query from the FICE database, it will actually send that, all the four chunks, it will be sending it to the uh, LLM. And notice in here, mentioned an inflation reduction action, action powerful, blah, 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 healthcare costs. Notice there is no mention. There is also prescription drugs, no medication whatsoever. So it actually did a pretty good job. All right. Notice also, let me copy that into uh, the, the, the clipboard. And here we'll say Control S. Let me stop this guy and notice i would like to return the source document as well so let's turn this on this is a very very important piece for a lot of different companies to show a citation a proof where did you get that answer from so if i come back in here and we'll do it again we'll say Control v let me make it a little bit bigger so you can see it better there we go and we will run this guy notice it will give us the same answer but this time at the end the four chunks that i told you about if you can click on each and every single one of them you can see exactly which chunk that is where it came from this is page number 10 out of 84 pages and uh, it's just great you'll be able to prove exactly uh, how all the stuff is working and hopefully this was useful to you to understand how uh, you can use the document stores uh, to be able to embed and vectorize outside of your chat flow and just bring it into any chat flow that you want right away and hook it up to the vector store retrieval and you're ready to go. If you like this video, please uh, like it. And if you feel like it, feel free to subscribe for all future vi videos regarding FlowWise as well. Thank you so much.